This is Phonic FM 106.8. Uh, the storyteller is still in France, and uh, I'm, I've am i just come in early. I'm, I am Will789GB on Twitter, and um, I normally just start up the Wild Show, which I'll still do. There will be a point around about 10 o'clock when it will become the Wild Show, and JD will be here soon after that, and Chris should be here about a past 10. But in the in the meantime, I'm gonna going to play... Uh, bits and pieces from Cartwheels Collective, which is another version of the storyteller, or Stand Up Thought on Twitter, uh, Stand Up Philosopher in full. Uh, but meanwhile, I'm going to go back to the, the playout system, which is not a computer. I'll come on to computers later on. Well, it is a computer, but it's not... Um, I don't think it's artificially intelligent, the playout system we've got at the moment. Uh, I think of it as more mechanical because there's buttons and faders which I hope are right uh, I'll try I'll try Jingle first and then uh, one of the tracks it would have played if I hadn't come in which is uh, Gene Vincent but first first of all a jingle Find us online at phonic.fm well, Gene Vincent and uh, now I'm going to play Marks in three minutes well it's two minutes forty seven which you'll find on Cartwheels Collective on YouTube. And uh, I'll, I'll come on later to playlists and the, 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 the lists that YouTube comes up with now. I've, I've done quite a few playlists based on my own videos and f ones I've found from other people. And they, they don't seem to get the, the attention they used to because uh, for some reason YouTube's got more confidence in its own robot. So it comes up with these playlists just based on the track you last played which I don't think is a good idea. I think, well, it may be generally a good idea, but some of the playlists are quite good, I think. Anyway, uh, this is a radio program, so, so it will be um, selected as it goes along, but maybe depending on what the robots come up with some of the time. Uh, marks in three minutes. Three minutes. Or it might be called Marks, a nightmare in three arguments and a panic attack. <laughs> Argument one. How are we going to understand what we have done in this, in this, what do we call it? This revolution in the industry. Think for a second what it involves. We've broken open the hidden power of the atom. We've let loose sunlight locked in the earth. We've called down the storm winds. Why? To rig them up to a mighty machine that transfigures human production, that turns it into a force of nature. But why? But to make 57 varieties of ice cream, new hat, new pair of shoes, we've taken them wild physical power and turned it into the slave of idle women fancy. Worse than that, we've taken desire and made it into a mighty peer of nature, giving it the right to punch and punch and punch where and when it will and laid upon rock and lust the Kantian duty to pull out endless new ravings, new cravings, so that future generations will kill each other for things we cannot dream about, for things we would not like. Argument two. And how can we comprehend what we have done? How can we contain it in a mind that is going to remain Paleolithic? An authority structure that is Neolithic? A property structure that is Bronze Age? And if we cannot, oh my. What blood are we going to shed, both our own and in this world of ours? And what scarcity are we going to create, right in the heart of plenty? To be the beating, secret, poisonous centre of this capitalist utopia of ours. I'll give you three. <laughs> and how can we understand what we have done? How will we understand it? Better, how are we going to understand our very failure to Oh, what little lies are we going to tell ourselves about what we have done, each like a sword of Oedipus, to poke out our eyes, to blind us from the all too hideous, palpable truth that we have taken desire and turned it into a Greek god, to give it the power and the, to, be a, to be a god, to be as capricious as a god, giving it the right to bleed this world dry, turning at last into a living husk. <laughs> Oh, my comrades, what revolution of spirit could ever save us 
from so dark a foreboding. <laughs> Find us on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Phonic FM. And uh, now a creepy BBC AI advert, it says on YouTube. You, I can't find much else. Um, BBC Four last night was uh, all about AI, including a, a, an hour with four segments selected from the archive. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of come on to... Ha I, I, think, I think YouTube's ahead of it, because I think YouTube's... The clips aren't quite as short as the clips that they had last night. Um, those were, you know, just a few seconds before it seemed to get fed up and move on to something else based on very strange criteria. Like, this this one's got a man in his shirt and the next one's got a man in his shirt. And uh, then there was one that worked on words. But I, d I, don't, I, I don't think there was... Perhaps it is that the, there wasn't any feedback. There wasn't any... Um, clues coming into the system as to whether it had worked or not it was very broadcast in that sense whereas youtube gets um does get feedback on what people like or where they switch to and it seems to work on that basis though the length of the clips is is getting longer as it goes on anyway this one this one is about uh about 30 seconds hello have we met before I am BBC 4.1. Thank you for your patience. We're trying something new. Different edge cutting. I will take control of your viewing. See the world through my eyes. Relax. It's going to be fine. Spend two nights in the near future with BBC 4.1. AI TV coming soon. Yeah, um... Go, going back a while to voice, because we've been um, we've been looking looking at voice as a computer interface for for a while on the the We Don't Know show and also on the Wild show, which is coming up at ten o'clock. Um, mostly because um, John Mayhe and Chris Norton both both have uh, li li limited vision, li limited visibility. I think the word proper word is, um, with the result that they they rely on sound. Uh, have relied on sound for quite a while, and so that's how they talk to their phones, how they get a, get a response out of out of that. So a lot of the sound interface with computers uh, just to, it makes sense to them, I think, more quickly than to to most people. So and also this sort of relates back to playlists, which are kind of automated, but you can interrupt them and go 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 to something else. And I, th I think that I think it, I think this AI is probably going to work. Well, it has been working in radio, like Pandora in the in the States, which uh, some people have been able to get in in the UK. Uh, it's been going for quite quite a while, and I I, I would have thought voice is going to going to be more likely than television in some sort of way. Anyway, going back to this playlist, which is called Voice for Access Computer Interface Stroke AI. Um, this is this is John Mayhe. Uh When was this? This is from tw December t 2016. This show, well, we've spoken earlier about sort of flipped radio. That it's not a very precise show here on the We Don't Know show. Mm -hmm. We don't know what R and B is, but we don't know what radio is either. Let's right. say. So um, we're gradually working it out. And we have been invited to contribute to the Tech Exeter show, which is a, a monthly show of, of about an hour. Have I been invited to do it as well? Yeah, yeah. All right. You've been invited, and Chris on Thursday. Right. And I might involve JD as well. Okay. Because he contributes to the Thursday show. Okay. So, they... Um, they're based on Tech Exeter, which is a social group and a meetup group, and also a conference. So they're qu they're quite uh, um, well organised. They are well organised. Sorry, I should say. So I'm stumbling about here. They are a very well organised operation, and they're they're doing a monthly show which they edit. So they have production values. By right. contrast, well, so by contrast, this show is sort of um, well, we do it live, and it's not that organised, and. Um, well, we do know what we're doing. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, I think what we'll do is have several goes at it and edit down a version that would make sense on the Tech Exeter show. Right. So, and our audience, hello audience, will just have to bear with us because um, this is flipped radio. Flipped, flipped classroom is um, people do the homework during the during the show and and during sorry during the class and um, do their studies at home or something something like that. So, uh, flipped radio. We're we're making a podcast using the studio, and um, if the audience get fed up with it, they'll have to find something else. There's previous versions of the show on Spreaker. Look for Access All Aerials. So that's that's all right. So John, come a bit come a bit closer to the microphone. Uh, because what I think would make sense for Tech Exeter would be voice. Okay. Voice as an interface to the computer. Right. That's a current issue. Okay. What happens to it then? They probably already know. They know about the cloud. Yeah. They know about machine learning. Mm -hmm. But they might not know about the the way voice has been working. Oh, if you're asking me whether they understand the voice recognition, I I, I very much I very much I very much assume that they do. Stay know, closer to the mic, John. That they do know what they're doing, and um, you got to remember that voice recognition is pretty pretty much bog standard if that's a word to use uh technology now because you have you have um the 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 voice uh recognition bit stood um it's it's built in to most um smart smart device these days it's built into most tablets it's built into most phones and it's um, built. It's built into some internet TVs, which my mum is giving me money for Christmas, and I'm gonna get an internet TV with that money. And um, so, I'm very interested to see the performance of a smart TV. Well, let's go back a bit, John. Explain. Um, you say it's standard. Well, now, well, well, but but it hasn't been. Go back sort of five years and what, just explain what you think has happened. Well, when I first come across Dragon Eight, it was the most unreliable bit of software that you could, would come across. And nowadays, every time you buy a Mac, you've got Siri built in, and every time you buy uh, Windows Ten, you would have. Uh, you would have a uh, voice recognition from Windows Windows built in. Yeah. I know every time you buy a copy of Windows Seven, there's Windows voice recogni recognition built in, and actually, a lot of the time for a lot of people, it takes out the need to go to um, companies like Nuance, which is from Dragon Actually Speaking. Um, it takes a need out to do that because a lot of companies these days are, are are building voice recognition into a lot of their products. So when you go back to Dragon Eight, my days in to the Dragon Eight, it was back in probably oh, it was probably back in um, 2007, and I and then it wasn't it wasn't so um, so with it. But now it's it's pretty much. Um, with it to be honest now it's as far as it's built into all other um, most products you, you buy on the market so as a as a computer interface what what has voice let you do that you weren't able well, to do previously lets me send my emails and it lets me to get, it lets me um, send my emails it lets me serve Facebook it lets me so it lets me go it lets me, it lets me look around the web um, it helps me to get my opinion across to, uh, in a lot of sense because you you can use it with most standard computer pro computer programs these days whereas um before uh dragon 8 I'm saying Dragon 8 because it was the first 
first experience I had with actually speaking and it wasn't really the best bit of kit I've ever used back then um, but all you could literally do with Dragon 8 was um, write Microsoft Word documents which is alright but since they released Dragon 9.5 which, stay up, stay up by the which was the version that I already had which is the, version I, the first version I got you can literally um say open internet explorer and it will open it and it will bring your home page up and it will also and it will also allow you to um to go on the internet and surf and surf the web whereas naturally speaking eight which was my which that was my first experience with it it didn't really do um, it didn't really cut it for me because it made so many mistakes and a lot of people are under the impression that and it really irritates me it really irritates me because you because a lot of people are under the impression that you can um, start training the program and you don't have to read all of the passages through but to get the best results you do have to train the program um, and it's very weird because it's very weird because you don't actually need to train um, the Windows voice recognition. You do, but you don't have to do so much. Um, you don't have to train the program when you're using Dragon Search speaking on the iPhone, which is an application. I don't use Dragon Search because I, I don't have a lot of time for it, but but they are two free apps on the app stores it will be available on google play and the apple store so if any of you are interested in trying out um dragon search which app but it's just mainly built for surfing surfing the internet um yeah um, so give it so give it a try if people out there and they and, and they have repetitive strain injury um, any injuries to their hands that they struggle with typing it might be the answer for you it might not be but as far as I'm concerned um, voice recognition has come on a lot but there's still a way to so, go so does it come, come more back to, to, vi to visibility um, to sight because <laughs> you're talking about well, it's, history, it's very it's very difficult because because you can if you're a Jaws user which I know a lot of people are possibly who listen to phonic programs um, you if you're totally blind and you want to be using um a product like naturally speaking you would buy extra if you were completely blind you would buy extra um two extra scripts that would you would run these scripts these um programs and that would allow you to that would allow jaws to communicate jaws is a windows version of a screen reader it's 800 pounds a copy jaws is um anyway i'm talking about windows not mac and and um then dragon will supposedly and i've never seen this in action so don't uh, quote me on it but i'm pretty damn sure that you can, that people can buy scripts that will actually make dragon and jaws work together so then it would be completely accessible to a completely blind user but these the, the scripts are a hell of a lot of money so on the on the money side of it you you seem to favor apple as a phone because a lot of the software is built into it yeah yeah, and but so come back, come back. I'll, I'll just, I'll just sort of go off on a sideline. John, you, your, your own vision, your, you don't have a three D. You see things, but you haven't got a three D. No, I haven't. No, so, so the, I have to keep reminding you where the microphone is. Okay. So, so I'm just explaining that to the listeners. So, so you do, you do wander, you do wander off, off the mic. Cause I'm not sure you, you have a sort of three D. Mm, no uh, conception of where, where no, no I don't you see some stuff but no I don't have a 3D conception of where I am at all um anyway let's get back to the okay so just, that's have. just a side, side issue so what did you want to know well the question is what you think is yeah. happening with other phones phones other than Apple whether there's enough software built in or is free or can be found somewhere or another um, or whether, whether there's any competition going on um now that that is a challenging question to answer really because 
every um, a lot of uh, well Google Play, which is the version of Google uh, Google's App Store. But Apple, not Apple Play, um, Google Play would would probably have um, free some free scripts. Maybe that would that would that would be able to help a blind and visually impaired user. I'm, I'm aware that some Android phones have got it, but it's nowhere near Apple's thing yet. So I shan't be upgrading yet to another phone. And that's pretty much what I've got to say on this topic. I hope that was informative enough for you. Um, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, John, thank you. Well, because that explains what's been, what's been going on. And my own, my own impression is that the voice recognition is, is about to go mainstream. There's lots of people offering, offering ways of which you can use that as an interface with computers. Yeah. But I think on the disability scene, it's been trending or active for quite a long time yep. which seems to be about about four years four or five years till it it was four or five years ago it was definitely working is what i've gathered mm -hmm. um and the the thing about apple i think we will we'll find out maybe more at bet where we which we are going to mm. um the last couple of years we've, we've been to the google stand and we have said um ba basically uh was the effect that we we think Apple is so far ahead? There's not really any choice as far as phones go. Mm. Um, partly, partly the software, partly the costs, but it may be a hardware issue. It may just be that because Apple controls the hardware as well as the software, that's how they get a very good accessibility result. And maybe now that Google are doing their own hardware, uh, they might be able to compete. But we'll we'll be asking that question at bet. And if anybody else has got any uh, anything to say about that, uh, we'd we'd like to know. Our, our Twitter feed is we don't know, W E N O T N O, because we don't know, uh, but we would like to. So John, have you got another another track? Shall I play a CD? You can play a CD now, John. Okay. Um, we're going to be we're going to be um, playing some comfortable. Yeah, I'll find I'll find that out now. Uh, yeah, just to, just to explain, that was a recording from the We Don't Know show from a couple of years ago, and it's now about half past nine. Uh, this this should be the drama show, but the storyteller's away. He's in France. He hasn't posted anything on uh, on Cartwheels Collective uh, that I can find, uh, but he will do. Uh, I'm away myself the next couple of weeks, but I think he's going to be. Or Cockwheels Collective, Woodsif and Dior are going to be in France for a couple of months, maybe. So we'll probably come back to uh, bits and pieces from the archive. That's to say, from YouTube. Um, I think they will not be adding new stuff uh, once they get set up in France. So going going back to to what John was talking about, um, Tech Exeter have got a conference coming up on Saturday which I think is sold out now so that you can't you can't go to it but I, th I think probably some some video will turn up later on from that and I think voice recognition has gone gone quite a bit further and uh, I think lots of people now have got some sort of device in their in their homes or at least have, have come across them and that's that's why I think really the the go, going back to BBC4 and AI for editing bits of archive um, I think it might work work out more with radio and j just voice as it as it goes on. Anyway, going back to the playout system, uh, this is the Everly Brothers. I'm so that's that's from the playout system, and I'm, I'm going to play one more from the the playlist. Um, it's on on YouTube. If you look for uh, Voice for Access slash uh, computer interface slash AI, and that's uh, so some some that we did ourselves on on the We Not Know and other shows, and some that were borrowed from other places. Um, this one's from Adobe Max, uh, 2016, and I, I they seem to have backed off it now, but they're basically claiming 
they can can sort of manipulate voice much the same way they can manipulate images with Photoshop. So this is a bit long, but I think it's worth worth playing uh, just to see what else has happened. So this is um, a, described as a sneak peek. Say you about Photoshop voiceovers. Please welcome to the stage, Zayu. Zayu. Hello, everyone. You guys have been making weird stuff online <laughs> <laughs> with photo editing. Well, we'll do the next thing today. Let's do something to human speech, like changing what you have said in your wedding. <laughs> so let's get on to it. Well, I have obtained this piece of audio where um, there's Michael Key talking to Peel about his feeling after getting nominated. Uh, there's a pretty interesting uh, joke here, so let's, uh, let's uh, just hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a... Oh, no. Out of here. Uh, I jumped out of the bed and, um, and uh, uh, I kissed my dogs and my wife in that order. <laughs> yeah, so how about we uh, mess with uh, who he actually kissed? <laughs> well, you may, have, you may be thinking, okay, we're pretty familiar with uh, Photoshop, but we're not quite used to audio waveforms. Uh, how can we do this? Well, I have a good news for you. Introducing Project Vocal. Project Vocal allows you to edit speech in text. So let's bring it up. Um, so I'll just load this audio piece into uh, Vocal. So wait a second. And uh, we have this. So as you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so as you can see, we have the audio waveform above it and we have the text under it. And uh, when we play back, the text and the audio should play back at the same time. So let's try it. And uh, uh, I kissed my dogs and my wife. OK. So let's, uh, let's do something here. OK. So suppose uh, Michael Key wants to send this uh, audio to his wife. So he actually wants his wife to go before the dogs. So. <laughs> OK, so what do we do? Easily, copy, paste. Let's do it. Copy, paste. Oh, yeah, it's done. Let's listen to it. And uh, uh, I kissed my wife and my wife. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oops, oops. <laughs> uh, where are the dogs? <laughs> OK, how can we let the dogs out? Ooh, 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 ooh. We can just type the word dogs here. <laughs> and? And uh, uh, I kissed my wife and my dogs. Whoa. <laughs> Wait. H here's more. Here's more. Uh, we can actually type something that's not here. So I. I heard that um, actually that on that day, uh, Michael actually kissed uh, our Jordan. So sorry. <laughs> to recover the truth, let's do it. So let's remove the word "my" here. Your secrets out, Jordan. And we we'll uh, just uh, type the word Jordan. Ooh. And here we go. And uh, uh, I kissed Jordan and my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you a witch. <laughs> yeah. You you a, you a demon. Oh yeah. I have a magic. <laughs> and the last magic I'm going to show you guys is we're we're not just going to do with words. We can actually type small phrases. So let's say Okay, so we remove those words and we do three times. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and playback. Uh. 
And uh, uh, I kissed Jordan three times. <laughs> Amazing. We have already done much for photo. We have already revolutionized photo editing. Now it's time to for us to do the audio stuff. Okay. Hashtag vocal. Yes, yeah, yeah. Woo. I mean Is it Say you. <laughs> Is it so difficult to spell the word tenderly? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a little? Hey, it's a little TMI, don't you think? But hey, you hey. know, we each, everybody has their own thing. Hey, and there's clearly been a lot of kissing. Three <laughs> tops that we know of. <laughs> the, I won't say how the dogs involved, but there's this. If this technology gets into the wrong hands. Don't yeah. worry, don't worry. There's we no. actually have researched how to like prevent oh. like, forgery. Yeah. We have like yeah. a think about like a watermarking See. detection. And yeah, as we are doing this, yeah. as we are getting as we are getting the results much better and uh, making people can't distinguish from fake to the real one while we're working harder on trying to make it detectable. Yep. Well, See? Uh, He's got it covered. So okay. Easy. <laughs> you can get in big trouble for something like this. <laughs> From me. That's White Fur from Moonstripe. Uh, they were on the fringe of the Exeter Street Art Festival, but they're, they're probably still somewhere in Exeter uh, most, most of the time. G going back to Adobe, they haven't actually done very much since since that um, uh, preview a couple of years ago. There may be a version of it being used in Hollywood if um, if the voice uh, source is unavailable and they've changed the script. I think they might be using it, but I think it might be quite expensive at the moment or possibly not working quite as they expected. I uh, don't know, but there's, a, there's another Adobe Max coming up so you would think they would announce something. Uh, may, maybe not. But it just shows, I think, that um, there's a long way to go with chat robots and voice. And another reason I think radio will, will, will make advances ahead of television. Uh, although maybe they're the same thing. Um, vis visual radio. Uh, I haven't heard a lot more about visual radio, but when Radio 1 visited uh, the Phoenix... They were going on about visual radio. So maybe adding video once you've got the voice won't be too hard. Anyway, going, going back to Cartwheels Collective, because this is uh, supposed to be the drama hour. Uh, but as I explained, the, 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 the storytellers in France, not sure how long, how long Cartwheels Collective will be in France. But anyway, this is, um, this is on their YouTube uh, channel. Uh, it's called Cupid and Psyche Remix. I think this will work probably okay as sound. Uh, you might have to find it on YouTube as well. I've, I'm completely confused as to what the plot is for Psy Psyche and uh, Cupid. And they keep doing different versions of it. Some with pre-arranged sound. The masks make a, a lot of difference, but I'm not sure which one is which. But I think there will be several versions of this. And if somebody's got a simple, straightforward uh, plot line, that would that would be a benefit. But you may you may get some clues from from this version. There was one with three daughters, the child of the goddess, and men said she must have been the child of the goddess. The goddess of the goddess. She loved more. I don't know, I think it might just be on YouTube as a backing track 
voice is going to be added later on. I don't know. Maybe another version. Well, I'm sure there'll be another version of Cupid and Psyche. Another mix of it. Uh, I've, I've got a couple of videos. I still don't understand the plot. Anyway, uh, the Wild Show will start soon after 10. This is the last track off the uh, playout system. Uh, Chuck Berry, Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> 